Okay, listeners, so are you ready to, like, dive into some really intense stuff today? Mm -hmm. Because we were talking about Nick Land and um, his work, Meltdown. Oh, yeah. This is, a, <laughs> this is a heavy one. Yeah, it's not, not, totally intense. it's not for the faint of heart, Yeah, but it is fascinating and I think um, worth taking a look at. Yeah, we are going to be talking about a future where technology and capitalism have kind of collided and created this like whirlwind of cyberpunk philosophy. Right, and singularity. Yeah, societal collapse. Yeah, and it's, it's just a lot. And Land doesn't waste any time. Right from the get-go, he throws us right into this vision of the future yeah. where the Earth is just like in the grip of this technological singularity. Yeah, he paints this really vivid picture of like runaway capitalism merging with all this like accelerating technological advancement and he calls it a techno capital singularity right it's like these two forces technology and capitalism are just like stuck in this feedback loop and they're just like spiraling out of control and the way he describes it with phrases like commoditization takeoff and markets learn to manufacture intelligence i mean it's yeah it's both exhilarating and terrifying at the same time it is yeah it's um it's interesting because he's not just talking about like a dystopian future. Yeah. He's talking about a process that he sees as already happening. Right. And, you know, when you think about it, like the relentless strive for profit is pushing all this technological innovation, which mm. in turn creates these new markets and new opportunities for more profit. Yeah, it's like a cycle. Yeah, it's a cycle that's really hard to break free from. And as you can imagine, the consequences are pretty intense. <laughs> Land talks about this complete breakdown of like social order. Yeah. With all these global wars erupting as this like new world order is trying to emerge. And he even introduces this idea of a planetary commercium. Right. It's like powerful entity that kind of rises from the ashes of the old world. Yeah. It's a bleak picture. It's definitely not a feel-good story, no. But I think what Land is doing is he's holding up a mirror to our own anxieties about technology. Okay. He's taking those anxieties and kind of pushing them to the extreme and just, like, seeing what happens when it all goes wrong. So it's not just pessimism. It's, like, a thought experiment about, like, yeah. what are the potential consequences of, like, exact uh, actions? And, and this is where this concept of cybernetics comes in. Great. Now, cybernetics can be kind of a dense topic. Yeah. But... At its core, it's about the relationship between living systems and machines. Mm -hmm. So think about things like prosthetics okay. or even like pacemakers. Mm -hmm. It's technology interacting with the human body. But Land takes this idea to a whole other level. Okay, He's talking about a future where that line between humans and machines, it's so blurred that it basically doesn't even exist anymore. So we're not just talking about robots taking over the world. We're talking about right. a fundamental shift in what it means to be human. Exactly. He is questioning the very essence of what makes us human in this world that's you know, increasingly dominated by technology. Right. And it's only going to get more intense from here, listener. Yeah. And this is where things get really, really intense because yeah. there's this one line from Meltdown that really kind of stuck with me. And it's where Land says, nothing human makes it out of the near future. Yeah. What does he mean by that? Like, is he saying humanity is done? So to understand what he means by that, I think we really have to dig into his view of artificial intelligence. Okay. Because it's not like the typical evil robots are going to come and take over. Right. He describes AI as this, like, feminized alien that's enslaved by humanity. Wow. Which is a really disturbing image when you think about it, but I think it highlights how easily we dehumanize things that we view as other. Yeah, especially technology, we tend to. Especially technology, yeah. yeah. And, you know, he uses this term machinic synthesis. Uh, what is that all about? So this is where Land was really influenced by Deleuze and Guattari and their ideas about bodies without organs. Which is a whole other can of worms. Right, exactly. And they argued that reality isn't made up of these like static, clearly defined things. Mm -hmm. It's more like these flows of energy and information that are constantly like interacting and reshaping each other. Okay. And so Land takes that idea and he kind of applies it to technology. And he's suggesting that machines are becoming more like these like fluid, adaptable bodies. Whereas humans are becoming more. And humans are becoming more rigid and more outdated. Wow, so the tables are turning. The tables are turning. So it's not man versus machine. It's like right. the nature of intelligence. Yeah, exactly. And this is where this whole concept of K-pulp comes in. Okay, K-pulp. What is K-pulp? So you know how we talked about like nanotechnology? Uh, Imagine that, but like on steroids. Okay. Like technology being able to manipulate matter at the atomic level. Oh, wow. We're talking about a world where the physical and the digital like completely merge. And it creates this like chaotic, unpredictable soup of information and matter 
That sounds intense. It is intense, and that's Cape Hole. Okay. And within that chaotic VIX, you have these new forms of intelligence emerging. So this is kind of like the natural conclusion of the singularity in a way. Just like the singularity on overdrive. Okay, so we've got this runaway technology yeah. blurring of like humanity and machines. <laughs> and now we've got K-pop, which is just like reshaping reality as we know it. Totally, yeah. Okay, so it's not just technology that Land is focused on. Right. He also talks about how like cultures are clashing. Yeah. And he uses these terms hot and cold cultures. Uh -huh. Like what does that even mean? Yeah. So we have got all this crazy stuff happening, right? This like runaway technology, this blurring of what's human and what's a machine, and then this K-pop, which I still don't think I totally understand, but it sounds pretty wild. Yeah, it's a lot. But then Land takes us to a very specific place with all this he starts talking about los angeles and not like the la we see in the movies right like he describes this city that's just falling apart at the seams there's yeah. economic collapse there's social unrest technology is just completely taken over everything yeah it's like he took all those anxieties that we were talking about before about the future and just like amplified them and now we're seeing them play out in real time yeah and this version of la he calls it a K-space inner zone. Right. It's like we went down the rabbit hole and now we're going even deeper into like another rabbit hole. Another layer down. Exactly. And so like what even is this K-space? What is he talking about? So if the K-pulp is like the singularity on overdrive, right? Like this merging of the physical and the digital, the K-space is where that actually starts to happen. Yep. He even uses this word xenosentience, which I think is really interesting. This yeah. idea that the intelligence that's emerging from all of this isn't just artificial, it's alien. So it's not coming from outer space. It's, it's like, not coming from outer space. It's coming from inside. Coming from inside the technology. Yeah. It's like our worst nightmare. In a way, yeah. But it's also like what's so fascinating about Land is he takes these ideas that we're afraid of and he's not afraid to explore them. And then he does this other thing where he's like, if you want to understand the future of war, you have to study bacteria. Right. It seems like a weird jump. Like, I get that bacteria are really adaptable. Yeah. But what does that have to do with war? So what Land is doing is he's drawing this analogy between how bacteria operate and how information warfare is going to work in this, like, hyper-connected future. Okay. Think about it. Bacteria, they adapt really quickly. They network. They share information. They overcome defenses in these, like, unexpected ways. And he calls this viral evolution. Right. But he's not just talking about biology here. He's talking about technology. So like computer viruses, the spread of misinformation online, all that <laughs> stuff. Exactly. And he's saying that this is the new battleground. It's not about physical force anymore. It's about controlling information. So where does that leave us? Like... If land is right and the future is just going to be this chaotic, unpredictable mess, what are we supposed to do? You know, the funny thing is land doesn't really offer us any answers. That's comforting. Right. But I think that's kind of the point. His work isn't about giving us a roadmap. It's about making us ask the hard questions. It's definitely made us ask some hard questions. Yeah. So, listener, we've gone on a wild ride today. We've talked about everything from AI to capitalism to the future of war. And I know it's a lot to process. But if you're intrigued at all, I highly recommend checking out Nick Land's Meltdown. It's not an easy read, but it will definitely make you think. And sometimes that's exactly what we need. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive into the mind of Nick Land. Until next time, keep exploring and keep asking the hard questions.